Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Scythe of the Abyss. It's an action platform and is by Julian Reed aka Epihomet. Uh, we're going to be playing as Death in this particular game and doing our best to traverse a landscape full of all sorts of angelic evils in our case. Well, they're evils to us anyway, trying to dispatch them and all the people in our way to gain the power we need to slay the king of the land. I'm not sure exactly what our agenda is in doing so, but you know, we're death. I'm sure it's something malicious. Anyway, this game is pretty fantastic. It is totally free and it's got a great soundtrack as well, so I figured this would be a real good one to show you. So why don't we just jump right into things and I will start us off. So level one. Here we are. So we are death, as you can see here on the left here. Uh, we're going to be pressing some buttons. There's our jump. We've got a dash, which lets us traverse through characters. And then we've got our attack, of course, which uh, reminds me a little bit of like a Ninja Gaiden style attack. So you'll notice our health bar right now is down to only a quarter of one skull. So if we slay that woman, well, it sucks for her, but we do... Oh, that's bad news. I just fell off of that because I've mapped my buttons to Joy to Key and I was using the analog stick and it got stuck pointing right a little bit. Okay, so these are our enemies. Basically, various versions of angels. They look a little bit like those squeezy toys, and I'm having a little bit of trouble with the controls, but it's entirely my own fault. They're actually very simple, and uh, when I was doing this in test, which I only spent a couple minutes with the game, it, it, it performs fine. Uh, the attack you get is not a very long-range one, so you gotta be a little bit careful about how you approach the enemies. Uh, but in general, a real well-refined game, actually. I was pretty surprised with how uh, well done that this was. And there's already a lot of things coming at me. Uh-oh, get to the people! Alright, so we've reached a checkpoint. That's real good news for us, because I wasn't doing so well. This dude is a little bit tough. We've got to actually time our hits and get out of the way between each fire. And it takes a lot of hits. One more. There we go. And I kept thinking for some reason in like a Castlevania style sense that maybe those torches uh, that are in the background were going to destroy if I was to hit into them. Oh, I didn't expect that angel to jump, but there we go. It killed itself by falling in the pit. Uh, I was almost thinking there was going to be some sort of extra like abilities or something for my character, but that is not the case. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight for these people and hope that maybe I can get past all of this business. There's a lot of enemies happening all at once here. And this is reminding me a little bit of Zelda 2 for some reason, this side-scrolling moment of forest that's going by. Is there, like, a weird withered-looking face in that tree? There very well may be. I'm probably gonna just, like, avoid all of this business. I could have been using Dash for a lot of these problematic moments. Probably would have been preferable, but, you know, I was uh, not entirely considering that. Okay, so there's level 2. I wasn't sure what the structure of this game was entirely. I thought maybe it might have been like one really big long level, but it looks like it's a similar theme broken up over a, quite a while of a distance. Uh, so we're going to make our way up into some sort of a castle-like fortress now. Uh, I'm going to wait for that thing to crash down again. And, oh, I don't quite have enough jump to make it up to that next tier, so I'm going to have to go to the left. I'm going to just warp past this guy here. Seems like way more trouble than it's worth to fight most of these dudes, especially when there's health waiting right below. Feels a little cruel, you know, destroying people's lives to go just get, you know, some skulls for your health bar, but you're death, so probably should embrace that type of thing. Uh, death is kind of a scumbag, I suppose, so that's just kind of his nature. Uh, oh, this could be bad. Why don't I teleport away from all of this? Where am I going? Am I, I think I'm supposed to go up here. Pretty obviously supposed to go up, actually. And now I've got to do a little bit of tight platforming. I feel like Death needs, like, one more frame of animation between leaning left and right and standing straight up. Uh, oh, need to use a teleport there for that to work successfully. Also, these tree sections here are reminding me a little bit of Iron Sword as well, maybe, like, the first forest area or something like that. Or, uh, Wizards and Warriors. Iron Sword is a sequel, if I remember correctly. There we go. That guy's no big deal. And we're making our way forward. Oh my goodness. Really well-realized environments, too. Like, all of this stuff is, is reminding me a lot of Castlevania as well. Uh, towns generally look sort of similar when it comes to NES-style games and color palettes, but the developer did a really good job at making things look a little bit differentiated from one area to the next. Those guys have seriously way too much HP. So I'm supposed to bounce across the tops of these roofs, as far as I can tell. And I believe there is actually a time limit, because it said in the readme that I want to make sure I make it to the end... Uh, and defeat the king. Oh, geez, what is this? That doesn't even look like an angel anymore. 
Uh, I need to make it to the end of this area and destroy the king before the sun rises, so I've got like one night to handle all of that business. And I imagine there could be a little bit of a speedrunning element to this game as well, because there's so much you can do to avoid actually getting into fights with the enemies. Pretty generous with these HP ups as well. I don't really seem to be running into too many positions where I'm like just unable to heal entirely for a long period of time. That's probably for the best. The game seems uh, pretty difficult. Although I'm also playing a little bit sloppy, so it's half my own thing, and that's what happens if you fall into a pit. You don't actually die, uh, unless you're down to the bottom last one bit of health that you have left. Oh, I've got to use a teleport here. I'm not going to make that distance. Good to keep in mind. Is there something up above for me to find? Uh, okay, no. That would have been a great spot for a secret, though, so I just had to check. And off we go to level three. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. This is a whole different looking area. And music's still really good. I am definitely enjoying the soundtrack to this. I may actually have to uh, listen to a little bit more of this later. I don't know why I just get so into these like chiptune style soundtracks. They just really seem appealing to me. Uh, I guess partially due to the fact that, you know, I grew up with these style of games. They're very near and dear to me for those reasons. And when I see one that's very well executed, uh, I tend to just gravitate toward them very well. Usually like a Locomolito, very good for these style of games. But this one, definitely right on par as well. Uh, I'm gonna... Oh, I thought this dude was gonna fall in through the cracks. That was not the case. Give me your health, please. Thank you. Death probably doesn't need to say please, but what are you gonna do? I like to be at least a little bit polite since I'm taking their life and harvesting it for my own life. Uh, that could be a bit of a problem. The giant candy corn monsters attacking me. Oh geez, there's no double jump. Probably best to use the teleport there. Oh, we found another checkpoint. I'm not actually sure if I'm maybe getting near the end of the game. It might be that short. Oh geez, he fell right off. That's not cool. Alright, so checkpoint or not, do I still... Oh, I still start back there, okay. I wasn't sure if that was just... Wow, okay, that's a little bit strange how that all works. But I wasn't sure if the checkpoint was just in case you fell or what. But I guess that really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, would it? Uh, let's teleport right in front of this dude if we could. Oh, that's not quite far enough. Thoughts. I don't know why I'm having such a difficult time judging exactly how far my character is going to fly when I do that. It's, now that I think about it, this is their way of teaching you. No, it's not, actually. you got to do a little jump. I hope you'll pardon me for being terrible for a moment here. Oh, but then you have momentum and you still fall off anyway. Okay, so don't teleport there at all. How about that? These jumps are strange. Okay, no teleport, no teleport. We're good. I like the little detail of those skulls in the background on those banners as well. Uh, let's do one of these. Oh, geez, he hit into me. So it seems like the biggest challenges that I'm facing here are not so much to do with the actual enemies coming after me. It's more to do with uh, just being a little bit confused as to when I should and shouldn't jump. Oh, geez, there's a lot of these wispy things. And these guys have 5 million health points. I don't know why. I just feel like Death should have some kind of power ups. He feels like kind of underpowered for the fact that these dudes are all over the place and they have a lot of hits before they'll uh, go down, so I figured maybe you should get some sort of, like, projectile attack for death. Oh, I figured those were dropping platforms based on the arrow down on them. Um, please? Thank you. Oh, that was a strange physics interaction. I'm not sure quite what happened there. Oh no, oh no, they... Oh, that's bad. I don't think there's actually been a checkpoint for a little while. Alright, so now I've got to actually do this properly and have enough health to make it through the dropping blocks area, and hopefully not get too overzealous again. This is totally like a fully legit game. I would totally love to see this fully developed into even more than it already is. And I say that knowing that it's probably not going to be too much longer. There's probably like another level or two at most, uh, although I am guessing when I say that. But uh, in general, the way this is approached, like I said, the graphics, the aesthetics, uh, the Even the controls, despite me having some issues here, I think that's partially my own fault. Uh, I, I would love to see this be even more than it is. I would also love to get a more powerful side, please. Alright. So let's not jump down at the wrong time. Let's make sure this wisp is out of the way first. 
And jump. Caref oh, jeez. Well, I used my teleport to get back to safety. I don't want this dude around. Surprisingly hard to hit for some reason. You gotta wait before you collide with that thing, otherwise you're gonna be in a world of trouble. And I presumed I was supposed to fall there. Level 4. Okay, so there's another level. Is this the encounter? Yeah, it is. Oh, jeez. What even is that thing? This is a pretty epic-looking boss fight. And this actually doesn't have that much HP, given how long that bar looks. Warning! Oh, okay, that's awfully generous of it, teaching me where to avoid the boss from coming up from underneath. So each hit is a half. Oh, I feel like I'm in the end of a Binding of Isaac run, uh, with the amount of damage that I'm going to need to not take to survive this. Oh, those little skulls only did a half, or a quarter, rather. So that's good. These also remind me a lot of Bayonetta, because it's like, they had a lot of these nondescript, like, angelic demon things in that game. Yeah, alright, I'm terrible. Um, this is probably not going to be a shining moment in my platforming action career, because I basically just keep running straight into the boss right away. Um, oh jeez, these rings are everywhere. They're halos, I'm sure, not rings. Can I get this thing in the eyeball again? Because that seemed to do quite a substantial bit of damage but I only have one hit left. Yeah, I needed a hit and teleport at the same time, I think is going to be the trick here. I'm actually going to be real sad when this is over. I would have liked to have played even more, but I'm also probably going to end up the episode right about here, despite how tempting it is to want to see if I can continue until I kill this boss. I have a feeling it's going to take me quite a few tries, because I'm just terrible, and I haven't perfected the art of teleporting and attacking at the same time as I've shown off very astutely here. So if you'd like to go check out Sides of the Abyss, you can. There will be a link in the description. It is totally free. Uh, you can see if you can approach some of these jumping moments and boss moments better than I did. Uh, but I definitely had a real good time with this. I really enjoy these short form, like, Nintendo style retro games, and I just, I wish I could find more of these that are, like, of as high quality as uh, this and the one that I posted the other day, uh, you know, continue Philly under fire. I thought that was really well done as well, but I'm just going to keep dying here, so I will wrap up the episode again. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, consider leaving a like on it. Go play the game. Let me know what you think yourself. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments, and of course, join us again tomorrow because there is a new episode of Indie Impressions that goes up every single day without fail. Uh, we're actually nearing the 800 episode mark, which is a pretty wild time, so if you'd like to uh, show your support for that, then I appreciate that as well. And of course, in the description, there's some other links that are relevant. I know I'm just being pathetic here, I'm just running straight into the boss. Uh, but I've got my Twitter, my Facebook, and my Twitch channel, as well as the website for the uh, series itself, indie-impressions.com, available all for your clicking pleasure. And I will see you all tomorrow, so thank you again for watching, and have a fantastic night. Talk to you later.